I've got one, two, three, four, five, six solutions. Okay? Six solutions. I said I was going to mention this um, earlier. Where's six appearing? Why is six important in this question? Because it's the, it's the sixth root. Okay, it's the sixth root. Now, um, how many of you do echo here? How many echo students here? One, two, okay, all right, not many. Echo students, hopefully, when they see the letters F, T, and A, they think free trade agreement, okay? But in the mathematics classroom, what I think of, and you should all write this down, really important result, it's called the fundamental. You know it's a big deal when it starts with the word fundamental, okay? The fundamental theorem of algebra. Free trade agreements, you and your human inventions. The fundamental theorem of algebra is something that's built into numbers. What it says is that if you have a polynomial of degree, whatever number you like, let's call it n, okay? This time it's six. If you've got a polynomial of degree n, you will have exactly n solutions, n complex solutions, okay? Um, you can see a lot of these are not going to be real numbers. In fact, um, have a look, have a look for me. We're going to draw this in a second, but can you tell, just by looking at these solutions, which one of these arguments are going to give us numbers that are going to be real? Can you tell me which ones they'll be? Okay, zero, that's going to give us a real number, because in fact, that's the obvious solution that I pointed out before, right? Do you remember? Modulus one, argument zero, so that's just one. Now, two pi, I'm going to leave that one out, because I've kind of already mentioned him. Two pi gives me the same complex number. Which other one will give me a real number in pi. this list? Uh, It'll be pi, right? Because pi spins me back onto the, the negative side of the real axis. Okay? So what you're going to get every time is the number of solutions matching this. Okay? Do you remember the very first lesson I said complex numbers? It's us searching for the building blocks of like, the, what's the bottom? What are all the numbers like basically built on? When you get some complex numbers, every quadratic has two solutions. Every cubic has three solutions. Every, I don't know what it is, but it's the Barrett's explorer that's called. It will have six solutions if you've got complex numbers. Okay. All right, I'm almost done. We can actually answer the question now. The question was, what are the six roots? I know all of them have a modulus of one. I've found all these different angles. Now I just have to state what the roots are. So I'm going to run out of space, so I'll go here. Therefore, The six roots are, we're going to list them, and then we're going to draw them, okay? So here we go. Um, Z is equal to, I'm going to write all of these in polar form first. Let's see how we fare, okay? Um, I can write this as cos zero plus I sine zero. It's just one. You notice I usually have an I out the front, but I, why didn't I write it? It's just one. It doesn't change the number. There's the first one. Uh, what's the next one? Cos pi on three plus I sine pi on three. You can see, you know how I sort of flamed it a little bit? I don't like cis notation, right? But you see why people appeal to it, because it is faster. But cos 2 pi on 3, cos pi. And. Okay, so that's a bit messy, but you get the idea. Now, I started this lesson with the premise that graphing stuff is nice for its own sake, but where it's really useful is where it helps you solve other stuff, okay? Now, where are these guys on the complex plane? What do they look like? Draw for me a complex plane. This one doesn't need to be too big. And let's plot these, let's draw them, okay? Because there are six solutions, I'm gonna designate them. Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, Z5, Z6. I usually use a subscript like Z6. Where are they going to go? Z1's the easy one. Uh, it's got an argument of zero, so let's chuck him here. Okay, so I'm gonna label that Z1. Where would you like me to draw this? I on three. So that's like six degrees up that way. Okay, so I think maybe, so, and it's going to be the same distance, by the way, same distance away from the origin. So maybe something like that. I think that's that's pretty good. Okay, that's about pi on three, roughly. Okay. Where's Z three going to be? The next solution along. Where are they going to go? 
he's going to actually go on the opposite side of the imaginary axis. Do you notice that? Okay, there's a symmetry here. Huh. That's suspicious. Okay. Um, I can keep going. I'm up now to the fourth root, and this is the one which gets me back onto the real axis. So it's going to be now here. Z5. And here. Z6. So now that you've got a picture for this, you can see, right? If I were to draw this whole thing out, what you've got, your sixth roots um, of this complex number, they all reside on a circle. They're all centered on the origin. And you also notice they are evenly spaced out. Do you see that? Right? There's this one over here. Then you go pi on three radians clockwise. Go another pi on three radians clockwise another pi on three, another pi on three, and the last pi on three, okay? So you can see here, these complex roots, right? If you're going to third, fourth, fifth, sixth, nth roots, okay? You're just gonna get all of these points on the circumference. Um, if we were to graph it in a test, we have to put one next to all the lines to indicate that's how far north away it is? If you had drawn this circle, um, you could do that, or alternatively, a better way of doing it, is that this circle has a name, right? It's centered on the origin, and its radius is one. So this is the, this is the unit circle, right? So I would probably just mark that as one, that is one, that is negative one, and that is negative one, and that is unambiguously all of radius one. So that way you don't have to draw, like, say, 15 <laughs> radii being labeled. Um, that shows you that's definitely the circle, okay? All right, now, let me make a note. I, I gave you this big flowery piece of language here, the fundamental theorem of algebra, okay? I see a big name like that means it's important. This number here, these six numbers that we've just found, by the way, they're the roots of one, okay? Now, one is an important number, just like zero is an important number. Zero is so important, we give it a name. We call it the origin, right? One, in the same way, also has a name, but no one who doesn't do extension two doesn't, knows what his name is. We call it unity. So if you go into an extension to textbook, you'll find a heading that says roots of unity. And this is what they're talking about, right? It's all of the roots to whatever degree of the number one. Units being what well, it means one, literally. 